Wherever you are on your leadership voyage, it starts here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Leadership Voyage, the podcast dedicated to your pursuit of becoming a great leader. My name is Jason Wick, and I'm happy to have you here for Season 2, Episode 8 of the Leadership Voyage podcast. You can reach me at startyourvoyage at gmail.com, or you can check out the show's website, or you can check out the show's website at leadership.voyage. Or you're already listening, so wherever you are listening to this podcast, do me a favor, do all of those around you a favor, and go ahead and make sure you are subscribed. Then you will get the latest episodes coming into wherever you are getting your podcasts as soon as they are available. Now, why do that? Because the more subscribers we have, the more reviews we have, the more opportunities others will have to see the podcast which helps in the mission of helping everyone where they're at on their leadership voyage. So if you could subscribe, I would really appreciate that. So I'm on for another quick episode today. This is another Forbes leadership article by Tracy Brower, PhD, a contributor to Forbes magazine. And this article was actually published a little while ago. It's January 29th of, of this year, 2023. And I don't know if you're active on LinkedIn uh, or at least passive on <laughs> LinkedIn reading uh, posts, you may have come across some kind of uh, clickbait or infographic or, or something that says, says this. It says 70% of people manager has a huge effect on their life, you know, on their mental health. For 51% of people, their doctor has a big effect on their lives and something like this. And a therapist, 41%. Uh, I might not be capturing that perfectly, but the point is, in this article at Forbes, it addresses that directly. So you may have kind of anecdotally come across this in the past two months. But new data suggests that for 69% of people, their manager has the equivalent impact on their mental health as their partner. And this is more than to people's therapists or doctors. 69% of people that their manager has the greatest impact on their mental health, which is on par with their partner. Now, if you listen to the previous episode, season two, episode seven, I talked about this article at Forbes called The Emotional Crumbling of Leaders. And for those of you who listen to that, which is about how specifically senior leaders are having a very difficult time taking care of themselves as they are continuing to try to take care of others at work, support others at work, this is not a great combination uh, to read this. So if you already are managing others, you're feeling the strain of of that uh, on yourself, then learning that you, as the manager, have the equivalent mental health impact on your employees that their partner has, I I don't know that 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 actually helps the situation. But, But what's really cool about this article at Forbes which is, again, by Tracy Brower, PhD. What's really cool about this article is it starts off to acknowledge that, okay? But then it talks about a lot of things that people can do as leaders to help support their employees, knowing that we as managers have this impact on others. And what really warms my heart, given the last episode about the emotional crumbling crumbling of leaders, what warms my heart is the very first suggestion that this story gives to managers and leaders is to first manage yourself. So number one, what can you do knowing that you have this critical role in the mental health of your employees? Number one is manage yourself. And I love that this is number one. Managers 
Well, lots of everybody. You don't have to be a manager, of course, but you're putting in lots of long hours in many situations. And there's an, kind of this intrusion, kind of this blurring of the boundaries between work and life, although we all know that work is part of life. But I think what we're trying to say with that, that quick phrase is the distinction between my work life and my personal life and how should those relate and how should they be separate? And I, I think there's a, a delicate, perhaps, art to managing that. But what it says in, in here about managing yourself, 42% of leaders, according to a Workforce Institute study, 42% of leaders say that they're stressed because of the stress they put on themselves. So what can you do in order to alleviate some of that as the leader? Say no when you're being asked to take on too much, too much work for your team. Or if you end up taking that work on, any load of work on, res- I love how it says, this is a direct quote from the, from the article, resist the urge to take on the work yourself. It says here that others watch you as the manager. They see how do you... What kind of choices do you make, how you manage yourself and manage your own work? Whether you want to send those signals or not, others are paying attention. So don't overload yourself. Lead by example. This will show that you're not putting too much stress on yourself, which can downstream provide a positive example for your employees. Now, I want to call out, I had a discussion with Liz Wiseman earlier this year, and she actually took a little extra angle here about the advantages of training others, uh, delegating, giving the people on your team the hard work, the hard problems to solve, and not keeping it all for yourself. In the context of this article right now, it's talking about don't overload yourself. But there's another positive aspect here to delegating and giving others hard challenges who are on your team. Here's what Liz Wiseman had to say about that. Um, Or simply to have the discipline to not do it for them. A lot of managers are operating under this model, which is, okay, my job is to do the hard stuff. Okay, yeah. In fact, I I have to admit, um, this would come in like the worst advice category (laughs) that I ever received in my career. So when I was a new manager, my boss said to me, he goes, Liz, as a manager, your job is to do everything that is new, important, and hard. Oof. He said, let your team do the rest. I, I did that. And so if like, you know, a hot issue came in, I handled it. And I let my team handle more of the quotidian kind of work. And then, you know, fast forward a few months, I'm off doing all the high profile stuff. And my team is stuck just kind of going through the motions. And I'm like, oh, well, who's hogging all the development for herself? Me. I'm building skills like mad. I'm building influence and credibility like mad. And people under me are just sort of letting me handle all of that. And I'm like, well, it was the worst leadership advice I had ever been given. Like, if you want impact players, give People, things that are hard. Okay, you heard it there from Liz. Now, what else is called out in this Forbes article about what can managers do knowing that they have this significant impact on the mental health of their employees? So the second thing they call out in this article, or the second thing that Tracy calls out in this article, is to recognize your impact. A lot of the time, managers don't recognize how much of an impact they have on the well-being of other folks. So create an awareness of this for yourself. When you are in a leadership position, an explicit leadership position, this story suggests that you have a more significant effect on the employees around you, on those around you. That yes, of course, everyone affects everyone else, but that the behaviors of the leaders are magnified. People really pay close attention to how they act and what they say. So if you're in that management and leadership position, recognizing this impact is really important. You can also show empathy for others. 
again, what we're doing here is we're taking the power of this impact. You're a manager. You're a leader. You have an explicit role in an organization. You recognize that you have a bigger impact than others because of your role. Use that to your advantage. Show empathy. That helps create a positive impact on, as they call it in this article, innovation, engagement, and retention. Just asking folks, how are you doing today, right? Things like that might surface when they need support. So take advantage of that impact and use it to your advantage and therefore to the advantage of others. Just being aware of it, being empathetic, asking others how they're doing can have a big positive effect. Third thing that they call out in this article is give people a reason to care. This kind of goes to purpose of work, which I think many of us understand or many of us believe that purpose in work, each decade, it seems to become more and more important. Work is more tied to people's identity today, I think, than it was generations ago. I might be wrong. I might be generalizing. But I would be happy to engage in that debate with anyone and and have a meaningful discussion and and learn from it, actually. But I do think what you've seen with this, uh, with millennial and younger, uh, is that the importance of their work is, is very, it's a very big deal. And millennials and younger are the majority of the workforce, if, if I've got my numbers straight in my mind still. <laughs> so give people a reason to care. Help connect them to the purpose of what they're doing. Help them see the bigger picture. This can help people understand why the work that they do matters. And if you tuned in for episode one of the current season two, you'll remember that I spoke to Zach Mercurio about mattering. And here's some stuff that Zach had to say about helping people think that their work matters. A healthy society cannot have unhealthy workplaces. People Mm, spend a third of their lives that they're awake for That's in their fair, jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So people try to separate work from life. It's just a job. It's not my life. It is your life. Yeah, your life exists wherever you're living and breathing, yeah. including at work. You don't just point. stop your biological functions because you clock in. Yeah. Um, and so work is important, but what can you do? One, know the first and last name of your delivery driver. <laughs> <laughs> Call them by their name. Um, ask the person in line how they're doing. Um, if your coworker was out sick, check in on them. Um, if your coworker has been struggling on a project, offer a proactive action to help. If you're in a meeting, someone goes around and they say they're overloaded, offer an action to help alleviate them being overloaded. Um, affirm <laughs> people instead of just saying, thank you. Uh, tell people the difference that they make when you're leaving an airplane and you see those people come on who are cleaning the airplane. Don't just put your head down and get your bag and leave. Look at them and say, Hey, thanks for cleaning. This looks great. Um, If you get a food service worker, um, instead of just treating them like a transaction, treat them like a person, Um, say hi, say thank you. Um, Do this for your leaders as well. Um, Remind people of their strengths regularly. The, The last one, show people that they're needed. When's the last time you said to someone, if it wasn't for you, um, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't be living where I'm living. We have a lot of those people in our lives who we can go through our entire existence without ever telling them that they're needed. You heard from Zach, uh, and Zach is really about mattering. Check out his stuff if you haven't already. Um, A lot of interesting stuff. His, His next book, I think, is going to be about mattering, if I recall correctly. The next piece outlined in this Forbes article is to connect people. It says, help connect individuals to other individuals and connect yourself to them. If if you're asked a question, if people reach out to you, be accessible, be responsive, and also connect people with each other. It's important for people's happiness, for their well-being, to have connection. I think that's something we might have lost a little bit of with the pandemic and perhaps with hybrid and remote work being more common. Connection is harder. It doesn't matter whether you're an introvert 
or an extrovert, connection is still very important. One other thing that's called out in this story about what leaders can do to help others knowing that they have a significant impact on their well-being is to provide people a challenge. And it's really interesting to find this one, right? I think this goes along with engagement. Help people find just the right amount of stress so that they're engaged, they have opportunities to learn and develop. Finally, give people a choice. This is the last element called out in this Forbes article, give people choice. We know that because of some of Daniel Pink's research, autonomy, mastery, and purpose are related to motivation. And what we say here in this article, what it says in this article is when people have choice, when people have autonomy, they are likely, they are more likely to experience well-being. So let's recap. We started off talking about how a manager has the equivalent mental health impact on employees as their, uh, the employee's partner. That's a big burden to carry. But what can the leader do? What can the manager do? Number one, manage yourself. Number two, recognize your impact. Number three, give people a reason to care. Number four, connect people. Number five, provide challenges. And number six, give people choice. Hopefully for those of you out here who out there who are feeling some of the challenge, some of the burden of management and leadership, hopefully you can take a few pieces out of this article. There's a link in the show notes to this article to read it yourselves. Hopefully you can take one or two things to move forward, help you feel a little bit more positive about your work when you're struggling and and ultimately pass that on to help support those around you. Until next episode, Thanks for joining me and everyone take care.